Hi everybody, this is Casey of Upcycled Island. And today I'm going to show you a refashion that I did that I've been wanting to do. I told you about it when I did the thrift haul that I wanted to put some applique on some jeans uh, with a design that had a 60s feel. And so I did that and I'm uh, making this video to show you some of the decision-making process, some of uh, the how-tos on how to work with the applique. I didn't show you the actual sewing machine part because I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And when I get frustrated, I, I say bad things. <laughs> And I wasn't going to subject you to that. <laughs> but it all turned out okay. I've got this. Remember this sundress? This sundress I showed you in my thrift haul video. And it is a knit, stretch knit. So this is a, a cotton polyester blend is what it looks and feels like. And uh, so that means it's stretchy, and my jeans are stretchy, so that's a good thing. Uh, it is very, it's, it's lightweight, so it's going to be really hard to cut out that design without some kind of backing. And if I try to put it on my jeans without some kind of backing and adhesive, it's just going to slide all over the place, and I'm going to say ugly things. So I decided to put Wonder Under on it, and uh, it comes on the bolt. It's made by Pellin, and this is Wonder Under 805, and you can buy it by the yard or partial yard. I buy a bolt at a time because I use it a lot. First, I cut out the designs loosely, just the fabric. And then I took my Wonder Under and <clears throat> unrolled some of it. And just placed my designs on there to get as much on it as possible, you know, to minimize the waste. And then... <clears throat> And then I uh, cut the wonder under across there so I could work just with that piece. Now, these already have the wonder under on them. And I'm just showing you how to accomplish that. If you use a dry iron, so if you have a steam iron, turn the steam uh, choice off of it and uh, use it just as a dry iron. Here's my, I have a small piece of Wonder Under. It's got a rough side, that's the adhesive, and it's got a smooth side, that's the paper backing. So you want to put it on your ironing board, rough side up, and then place your designs on it. And this is just the design with you know pretend it doesn't have the backing already <laughs> and place that on there and then you'll take <clears throat> parchment paper parchment paper like you use in the kitchen when you bake cookies and you don't want it to stick to the cookie sheet and so you place the parchment paper over everything. Now that does two things. It protects your iron from getting the sticky stuff on it. And it uh, protects the fabric because if it was a all polyester fabric, it, the heat could, the intense heat could melt it. And so the parchment paper will help prevent that. So you get two for one in benefits. And then 
you have that covered, cover all your sticky, or make sure your iron doesn't get on the sticky part. <clears throat> and then just press your iron on there. Now, I'm not going to press my iron on there because the iron's hot and these have already been done, but I just want to show you. you. Just press your iron on there for like eight seconds. And then move your iron to the next part for eight seconds. And then do that until you've done the whole design. And then go on to the next design. And that adheres the wonder under to the back of the fabric. Then you peel the parchment paper off. It'll stick in a couple of places, but it'll come right off. Take your paper cutter scissors, scissors and cut these apart. So now you have your design on the Wonder Under, or you have the Wonder Under on your design, however you want to look at it. And um, with this one, I'm just going to cut around this circle. Now, I can't use my paper scissors because they won't go through the fabric, and I don't want to use my good scissors because the paper will dull those. So I have some intermediate scissors that used to be good scissors and I've used them and so now they're intermediate and I can use them for chores like this. And then I can always have them sharp and they'll be good scissors again. So um, you cut out your design. The one to under helps make that easier because it gives it some body. Alrighty, I'm going to show you what I've done so far. Ta-da! <laughs> I had thought that I was going to put this one here and then put the other ones, wrap them, you know, do like a bouquet of them. But they're just too big to do that. So I decided to line them up on the side seam. This is the left leg. And then on the right leg, I took half circles and put those on the hemline. So uh, they are ironed on, and the way I did that it was to uh, one leg at a time, I smoothed this all out as much as possible, and then <clears throat> I used my parchment paper on top, uh, of course peeled off the backing of the Wonder Under, placed it where I wanted it, and uh, place this one and then tuck this one underneath it and the same thing on these. And uh, then place the parchment paper on top to iron them on. And since it is on denim and I want to make sure it's not coming up, uh, and it has the parchment paper. I held my iron on there for 12 seconds and then moved the iron and then moved the iron and then moved the parchment paper and did that all the way down. And then on the other leg for the hems, I uh, you know, cut my circles in half place them along the hemline and press them on the same way. And of course the edge of this was still loose. Uh, so I had to, uh, you know, refold the hem uh, to get that last edge down on the flower. So now I have to decide how I'm going to sew them on. I know a lot of folks just uh, use the Wonder Under 
and um, leave it like that. However, <laughs> I am not one of those. I want to make sure that it's not coming off. So I want to sew around the edges. Now to do that, <laughs> I'm either going to have to use free motion or I'm going to have to undo the inside seam and open that leg up so I can, you know, put it on the machine and sew around the edges and sew around the middle. What I plan to do is sew around the edges and then sew around one of these inner circles and sew around this other inner circle. And I wanna do that on all of them. And that's just so, after you wash them sometimes, the wonder under can come loose in places. But if it's anchored in uh, more than one spot, then it's not gonna come loose and you know get wrinkled and all that. So that's the plan. And I will be playing with scraps <laughs> to see if I can free motion that or if I'm going to have to undo the seam. Now on here, on this edge, uh, I think I'll be able to finagle that, finesse that enough where I won't have to open any seams because I've got my, because I have my fabric over each seam, so I don't want to undo that seam. So I'm pretty sure that I'll, it'll take a little doing that I can finesse these edges enough to get that on. Alrighty, before I did the actual work, I did some scrap pieces and I tried free motion. And uh, even on a flat piece, I had trouble I used an invisible thread, so I don't know if you can see that, but it's very wobbly. I'm not very good at free motion. It's a learned skill. It's something that I need to do and redo and redo and practice to get better. Um, I went around here. I did a little bit better around this small circle. Uh, and then I tried it on the jeans. And while they were still seamed up, I, and uh, I had less control because it wasn't flat. And uh, so my, <laughs> I used the invisible thread, but my stitching was just, wow, it, really bad. So I stitched around the circle, and I stitched around this little circle, and it, this little circle, and I tried to go around this circle, and it is wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. I don't know. You can probably see that. And uh, so it looks pretty bad, and I'm, I'm pretty picky about what I do, and that was not acceptable. So I went ahead and uh, ripped this inside seam open on that leg, and uh, so it would open up, and then I did a zigzag stitch around the edge using a regular foot and the feed dogs up. With free motion, you put the feed dogs down and you move the fabric. And uh, with a straight stitch is what I had. Uh, when I used the um, zigzag stitch, I had uh, an applique foot on with the feed dogs up and um, stitched around the edges. And then uh, did the same thing on this one. So I stitched around the edges first, and then I went back and did a straight stitch. I didn't on these two, because I'd already done the um, free motion, and uh, I didn't mess with the tension enough, so tension enough, so you can I can see it, and uh, 
when I wear them, I don't think people are going to notice that. If they, if they do, they're too darn close. <laughs> so, but on this one, on these two, uh, for the inside, I did a straight stitch with batching thread in this navy blue. And then I did the same thing with the navy blue inside here. And that's just so uh, if the one to unders after washings and dryings starts to let go, it is secured in the middle of all of these. So that's what I ended up doing. And then on the hem of this side, I, I did not have to open up that seam. Turned it wrong side out and just finessed it. <laughs> I first zigzagged the straight edge all the way around, the straight edge of the, the design. And then I just finessed it to uh, go around these scallops on the edges. And I didn't do anything in the middle because that's not very wide, so it's gonna be okay. And then after I finished that, I uh, seamed up this inside seam that I had torn apart. And it was a serge seam. This is what the original seam looks like. It's serged edge and then it had the chain stitch. I clipped it back together and followed followed with my straight stitch the uh, where the chain stitch had been and then after I finished that seaming it up then I surged the edge to finish the edge off and um, then I put it on my ironing pad and I steamed it real good, and that helped uh, get, get the shape back. These are really big pieces, so I don't know when I put it on if this is going to distort the fit because these are such big pieces. Same thing with the hem. Uh, that's a pretty big piece of fabric added to a, a thick denim anyway, a stretch denim. And um, so I'll see when I put them on if the fit or the, uh, the way they hang, if that's distorted. So we'll see. I'll try them on and I'll show them to you. Okay, I'm back to show you the finished project on wearing it. And you can tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my youtube channel and there's also a little bell next to the subscribe button and if you punch that then whenever i post a new video you'll be notified so uh and then like and share my videos if you would uh without further ado here it is i have the design down the side of the pants and it came out pretty much the way I thought it would. I was worried about the size and weight of the fabric. Would it distort the fit? And I don't think that it has. Uh, the jeans are tight enough <laughs> that uh, they fit the same. And then on this leg, I have just the hem done, just to design around the hem. So we have an asymmetrical design, which is really hard for me because <laughs> I'm used to everything matching. And uh, so I'm really breaking out of my comfort zone on doing things nowadays uh, that are asymmetrical. But anyway, I really like it. I really, really like it. And I paired it with my new shirt. <laughs> Here's another shameless plug. Uh, refashion. The ultimate upcycle. And so we're going to be doing some more refashions. 
and uh, I'll put the link uh, to how to get the shirt in the comments or the uh, description. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.